Do y'all see that amazing view? Anyway, I've had the iPhone 14 Pro Max for nearly a year now, which is kind of crazy to think about. To give you a little bit of context, I have the one terabyte version in the purple colorway, and I'm sure you're curious on how has this held up for almost a year as far as the battery life, is dynamic island, all that. Spoiler alert, it's more of a gimmick. How is the overall software experience? Has it improved? Is it still a little glitchy here and there? We're gonna talk about all that. Let's get right into it. Most individuals purchase the Max model because it has a bigger display and larger battery. As far as the battery health, this has 96 maximum capacity, which isn't terrible. It's actually pretty decent considering that it's nearly a year of use. I'm really curious to see how this holds up in like the next two years or something like that. But I'd say for the first year or almost year, it's actually not bad at all. Now, I like the fact that it has the optimized battery charging feature, which essentially means when you keep this bedside, you have it charging overnight, it's gonna charge extremely slow. That way it doesn't degrade the battery life in the long run. As far as my experience, to give you some context, I typically use my phone for a little bit of gaming, mostly content consumption and a lot of social media and a lot of FaceTiming. So I personally get on average a day to a day and a half of use, a day of use on a heavy day, a day and a half of use on a more of a lighter day. So if you're looking for a long-term perspective and you're looking to purchase maybe like a used model of this phone, consider that the battery health is still gonna be around 90 to 100%. Let's talk software. Since the release of this iPhone, there has been numerous updates. It has gotten snappier throughout the time I've had it, and new features have been added. But unfortunately, I'm still experiencing bugs like today. I was shooting this video and I couldn't get past the lock screen and had to restart the phone. Another noticeable bug is the dynamic island ending up on the side of the screen, which should have been fixed by now. Speaking of that, I was hyped for this feature at launch, but after nearly a year, I can confidently say it's a gimmick. Some apps do take advantage of it, but the day-to-day -day apps like the ones most people use, such as socials and video streaming services, have done a poor job at this. Let's talk about ProRes RAW. Is it really that raw? Like seriously speaking, fun fact, this entire video is actually shot on ProRes RAW on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I'm just joking. Like what if it really was though? That would be like pretty ridiculous. Like you clearly tell the background is kind of blurred out. But anyway, is it actually that good? And it is, but I'm noticing that some people can't really tell a difference, but I personally can. I've actually gotten some really great footage with ProRes RAW. Like my favorite shot has been on the plane. It looked immaculate. And then I'm gonna do a quick shot right now. And then let's see how well it looks like. Now, if you're gonna be using ProRes RAW, you're gonna need a ton of storage, but I'm gonna do a quick pan with this phone so you can get an idea of exactly what it looks like. And then I'm gonna do the same exact shot with ProRes RAW off, and you tell me if you can tell a huge difference. I personally would say it's, it's hard to tell the difference unless you're viewing it on the iPhone screen. When you actually watch it on PC, it's like, it isn't that noticeable. Like, it's really not. But I like the fact that we have that option here because it makes me feel like I'm recording better footage and I'm not sure if I am. Let's talk about this always on panel because that's been a concern for a lot of people. Is it gonna kill the battery life? Yes, to answer that. Um, is it really gimmicky? Sometimes it is, especially with color on. However, if you didn't know this, on the focus settings, you can actually go to um, the do not disturb settings and you can actually turn on pretty much dim lock screen. And if you have it on, you'll either have, it'll go between this and this. So it gives you more of like that Android black and white option, which is more convenient and it preserves the battery life a little bit more. However, if you have this feature on, you are gonna degrade battery life. I don't know how well it's gonna be for the longevity of this display. However, I have noticed that it is not that convenient. So if you're somebody who really wants to get the most battery out of their phone, I would keep this feature off. Now the display is noticeably brighter than its previous predecessor. The only thing that I don't really like about it is the fact that it throttles, just like the iPhone 13 Pro Max. For some reason, when you're outside, you're sitting at full brightness. It's a sunny day just like this. I still can't get it to get that peak brightness of 2000 nits because for some reason, the phone forcefully just makes you go at a certain brightness level even when it's all the way up. I don't know 
if it's because the phone could potentially overheat, but I would hope to at least have that option in where I can still fully utilize that 2000 nits because for some reason, when I'm outside, I haven't really been able to get this or been able to really use this at its max peak brightness of 2000 nits, even when I'm just browsing on social media. Can you guess how old this truck is? Like it's still using wood, but let's talk about durability. It's actually held up fairly well. I've had it in this um, iPhone purple case with the green wallet and this has a ton of scuffs and the leather starting to peel off and everything like that. However, the phone looks in pretty great condition because it's been in the case for the most part, but there's this giant scratch and a few deep scratches on the display that I don't really know how it got there. Like I don't keep my phone and my keys in the same pocket. So it is kind of weird that I do have these really deep scratches. There's some dust under the speakers. And speaking of those speakers, they actually sound phenomenal. Like these are some of the best speakers you'll find on any phone. However, I personally would rather use the Nothing Buds because they're much cheaper than the Apple AirPod Pros and you still get noise canceling for nearly half the price. So yeah, I would recommend using external earphones over the speakers on here. But if you need to use the speakers on here, they'll still work. There is no denying that the iPhone 14 Pro Max is and has been a reliable phone for me but there are some questionable bugs that you would expect to be fixed by now which can be unfortunate for some people who upgraded simply because of the hype i'm hoping more developers take advantage of dynamic island and that all these small bugs are fixed with the next major update i still would recommend this phone to anyone coming from the iphone 12 and below especially since you can buy it new or used at a lower price than launch date if you have any particular questions on this phone drop a comment below and I'll make sure to respond. My name is Victor Kamanga. This has been another Everything Technology video. Thank you for watching. Bye.